Isn't it nice when you can appreciate the quality? Not the print, the frame. The print's just mass produced. The frame has been made by me. Recently, a job that's just been elevated to the top of the list by the boss is to make a frame for this very cheap print. This is something we bought recently. There's nothing special about this other than the fact that it's got the same colours as the room we're decorating. So it will look quite nice. But I don't really just want to put it up on the wall like this. That's what I used to do as a student. So today I need to make a frame for it. And what I thought I'd do is I'll replicate a frame that I made some time ago for a different print. And this is an incredibly easy job and it ends up looking fairly smart and modern. And what I'm intending to do is have the print sit inside the frame a bit like that with maybe a 20 mil gap all the way around the outside, which actually makes it look fairly smart and as if it's been made for the frame. And as you can imagine, this is a fairly simple project, but it can be more difficult depending on how much woodwork you want to put into it. You see, all it's made out of is two pieces of wood joined together and then mitered in the corner. And because it's painted, obviously any little gaps we have around the mitres or any little holes we have for screws or whatever, we can fill and paint over. So it hides a multitude of sins. Now, if you have a table saw, and you have various sizes of MDF to hand, you can actually cut down some, maybe some MDF strips to make this timber. Most people haven't got a table saw and mine's sort of out of action at the moment. So the first thing we're gonna need is some wood. If, like me, you don't have planers and thicknesses, then planed all round timber is definitely the way to go. With prices still high, I have no embarrassment ensuring that what I'm buying is dead straight and good quality. And really, in the big stores like this, no one seems to care how much you go through to find the straight stuff anyway. So I'm back with four pieces of very straight timber, but to be fair, I only looked at six anyway. The first four were absolutely fine. So size-wise, these are 18 by 44, and they're planed all round around about five pound each so this is 20 pounds worth of timber and i only need four because when i put them together that means i've got two eight foot lengths this uh print i was going to say painting but it's not is four foot by two foot so two sides is six foot long if i make up an eight foot i've got plenty for the mitres so what i'm intending to do if i just put this here is make something that looks a little bit like that or could actually look like that. This is the way I did the last frame that I just showed you. The only problem with that is that this is quite deep and it means that this actually protrudes and I don't really want that. I want it to be, I want this to be further back than this. So this time I think I might plant this on top. It doesn't really make much difference other than the fact that when you see the frame from the side, if you have this on the side, then you obviously can't see any joins. If you've got it planted on the front, you potentially can see this join. So when I join these together, I'm going to have to make sure that they line up exactly. I don't really want to start planing the thing down. I don't mind doing a little bit of sanding, but I haven't got all day to start planing timber. So what I will do is just to make sure that they line up as close as I can when I join them together. And that means a lot less finishing. The great thing about having two bits of timber like this in an L shape is it becomes an incredibly stable piece of timber in both directions. Because obviously a piece of timber like this is stronger in this direction than it is in this direction. But when you join two together, one takes a strength in this direction and the other one takes a strength in the other direction. So an L shape, a bit like a T shape really, starts getting really, really strong and nice and stable as long as the timber you bought to start with is nice and straight, which it is. So 
let's get on and join these before I use screws. Uh, this time I think I'm just going to glue it and pin it because I've now got compressor and my nail gun and that I think is just going to be easier. <laughs> I select which way around I want my timber to go, ensuring that the best edges are on show and any large round knots are hidden from view. I'm just using touch here to feel when the two pieces are exactly lined up with each other. And the pin nailer is really a temporary fix at this point that just helps keep things in place. With all the timber joined and most of the squeeze out cleared up, I can clamp them together for the glue to gain strength. As I only have a very small ramshackle set of cheap clamps, I clamp the two sections back to back, which cuts down the number of clamps I need by 50%. To do the same, if you don't have a nailer or clamps, just use screws to pull the timber together as the glue sets. So that didn't take very long at all, but then it shouldn't because it doesn't get any easier than that. Just feeling that joint there where the two bits of wood meet. Most of it is pretty flush actually, but there's some areas where maybe I'm a tenth of a millimetre out. It just tends to wander a little bit. So I don't feel the need to plane that. It's so precise already. I don't think I need to plane. I think all I do is I'll just sand that down on both of them and that just makes sure that those are absolutely dead smooth. And then we're ready for some primer. The one thing you can apply at this stage, and I've never had very much success with, is not in solution. And what this is, is a petroleum based, <clears throat> I don't know if it's petroleum, but it's pretty nasty stuff, solution that if you apply to the knots, essentially helps in theory to seal them and to stop them essentially weeping once you've painted. And that means that in theory, you don't get these little yellow splodges come through your paintwork in time. Um, what you should do is apply this over all the knots and then come back in 15-20 minutes time and maybe do another pass. I must admit I've never had much success and I've applied a lot of this over the time over my time and it's never really worked. But I keep trying. 12 pound a tin, blimey. With everything sanded and the knot in now dry, I give everything a coat of primer. So 
So the two sections of my frame have had plenty of time for the primer to dry. So now's the time to actually start cutting and joining things together. And I was having a quick look at this and I think I'm going to go for a 10 millimeter shadow gap all the way around the outside. The reason is I haven't got that much. I've only got 25 millimeters here anyway, and I do need to stick the print to this section. So I'm going to knock it down to about 10 millimeters, which is going to look a bit like that. And it makes it very, very easy to cut because all I have to do is measure the size of the frame. This is 600 and then add 10 millimeters this side and 10 millimeters this side. So I need to cut these sides of the frame at 620 referenced off of this edge, not the outside edge and not the inside edge because that doesn't mean anything. It's this edge here that will be going around the print. So 620 in that direction. This one is 1200. So 1220 in that direction. I need two of those and two of those. With the L-shaped sections nicely glued and primed, there is a certain satisfaction cutting through the two pieces that now are perfectly joined with a full glue joint. Here's a quick tip, because I just realized it's quite difficult to measure this. Come and have a look at this. So I'm measuring from this face here, this corner here, not the outside corner, because that doesn't bother me. And this one means nothing to me. The outside corner here. And I just realized something that I do all the time that people might not know about is if you're trying to measure from something like this, it's quite difficult, especially with this wobbly bit on the end. Do you try to hook it on or do you try to sort of get it level? Well, actually something that we do in engineering setting out all the time is if it's difficult to measure from a point like that, just start on something well known like 100 millimeters or four inches or five inches or whatever. That means you can lay your tape along there. I can see that I am within a sort of tenth of a millimeter of that line there. I can just hold my tape on there then extend it to where I want to be. But I now have to add in 100 millimeters that I'm not using at that end. So rather than marking at 1220, I now have to mark at 1320, which is easily done. I can then just double check it very roughly from there to there, which is correct. It's a great way of measuring when it's difficult, as long as you remember to add on the section that's overhanging. With the four sides cut and looking the same length, I can put them together to see how the print fits. Very good. To join the corners, I once again use glue and pin nails together with some clamping squares to keep everything, well, square and to hold everything together while the glue gains strength. While the glue is getting some strength, I've just taken the opportunity to fill some of these pinholes with a bit of filler and then just to do a bit of sanding on each corner just to make sure that everything looks nice and smooth, ready for painting. I've also taken the opportunity to make some of these, I suppose you call them gussets, just out of ply. This is maybe 9 mil ply. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them in each corner and they're going to serve two purposes. In fact, probably three purposes. I'm going to fix them at the back there so they're not showing. Just push them in slightly. And what they'll do is, firstly, they'll give me somewhere convenient to fix through here into the wall. Secondly, they'll actually help strengthen each one of these corners just to make sure that nothing goes anywhere. But most importantly, this is what I found out before when I was doing this, 
The frame really needs to be slightly adrift from the wall. And I'll tell you why, because if it isn't, you very quickly find out that your walls aren't flat. And there's nothing like putting a straight piece of timber to the wall to find out that the wall actually moves in and out. And rather than that touching all the way down and all the way underneath, what you'll find is it will deviate. So the best way around that is to do a shadow gap and just push it away from the wall a few millimetres and then the eye won't be able to follow and won't realise that there's anything adrift there. And it also makes the frame look like it's floating a little bit away from the wall. It actually gives quite a nice effect. You would have noticed on my first frame that I showed at the beginning, rather than, rather than using these gussets, I actually just used a little bit of batten. But I'm all out of batten, so a little bit of ply will have to do. It's very straightforward to fit on the wall. Just put it where you want, level it up, mark the holes, screw it to the wall, just make sure it's level. All I'm using is these Velcro stick-on tags that if you put in the right place and then stick the print to it, if there's any adjustment, the print can always just be pulled off and repositioned. Or if you need to take it off the wall, obviously the Velcro just pops the print out and then you can take off the frame. And I think the important thing is to make sure that the gap around the outside is consistent. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's consistent. It just means that you've got a nice smart frame for your modern print. So I'm really happy with that. The only thing I think I need to do is just give the obvious surfaces one more coat of paint. Where I use that knot in, actually you can see it, you can see it coming through, which is like the opposite of what it should be doing. So I think I need one more coat of paint to hide that, which is a bit ironic because that's the whole point of it. It doesn't come through. If it goes yellow as well, I'm going to be most upset. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the frame. I will see you next time.